Okay, welcome to part two of this tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to hopefully finish off the site we were making. Um, I'm going to finish. I'm going to create this short, short URL function, and then um, move on to creating the two pages that we're going to be using, as well as hopefully at the end mentioning the HT access um, thing. Although that's a standard <coughs> rewrite mod rewrite rule, so maybe I won't do that. Uh, depends on time. Okay. Um, one thing I have noticed is that, that well, between recording and uploading, um, adds a new function, that should have been. Um, okay, so let's get on with coding this shortened URL function. Um, first thing we obviously need to do, as always, is escape the um, URL input. So I'm going to do that using the MySQL real escape string. Um, if you don't know what this is, whoops, if you don't know what this is, go and watch my video on SQL injection and preventing against it um, because you may not need to well you may not want to be calling mysql real escape string like this directly here you may want to first be applying strip slashes um, I explain the difference and why you might need to do that in the SQL injection video so after we've applied mysql real escape string to the URL variable we need to check if the um, URL kit URL is already in the table um, as I demonstrated in the original video, if a URL is already in the table, um, just that key is used again if someone tries to shorten it, um, just to save on space in the database, and also it will make the URLs remain as short as possible for as long as possible. Because every, obviously for every new URL, the um, key length will eventually increase. Not for every one, but for every, like, sum. I'm not sure what the number is. Um, because basically we can uh, we can store 36 URL um, URLs in one digit. So yeah, that's that. Anyway, um, right. So what we want to do here is find out if the URL key is already in the table. So what we're going to do is get try and get the URL key from the table. So I'm going to still get this um, using the query, obviously, and we'll store it in a result variable. We'll do MySQL query. What we'll do is select URL key from URLs, which is the table name, where the URL is equal to the URL the user has entered, which is in the URL variable, or the URL we've passed into this function at least. And then we're gonna, again, we're going to check the number of rows returned by this. The reason we don't just use the count function is because we actually need this result. If we just wanted the number of rows, we would use count, um, like here. But because we actually want this value, we're going to try and select this and then use the MySQL num rows function. The reason for this is just because doing it this way is more efficient than just doing two queries. Um, so what we're going to do is check if MySQL num rows result of result even rows rows uh, result is equal to one. And if it is, we just want to return that result. So then we'll return mysql result result zero so that means that like if this is true if the key is in the table if the url is in the table then we will return this and then not execute the code here which will be creating a new key and inserting that so what we need to do next uh, if this is not true so if it hasn't been returned we'll get here basically um, so we want to um, create a new URL key. So we're going to do that here by using the base convert function. Um, I'm not really going to explain entirely what that means because it's quite mathematical. But you can look up it, look it up on PHP.net if you feel the need. Um, I'll demonstrate how how it works and what the result of it is um, here. So let's just say um, URL key. We're going to define this new URL key variable. I'm going to set that equal to base convert. It takes three parameters. The first one is the number you want to cr convert. Um, change the base of. That makes sense. And what we're going to do is get the number, get the total number of rows, and add one to it. So that'll be used sort of the next one. Um, we could just use the total number of rows. That'd work equally well. But I just want to go with plus one because don't know. Just do. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. Um, let's see. Right, in brackets, we're going to do the maths. So get 
uh, total URLs plus one. Okay, that's the number we're converting, and the current base of this number is 10, and the base we're converting to is the maximum, which is 36. Um, one other thing, this function needs the first parameter to be a string, so we just need to cast this to a string, as we did uh, when preventing, well, here. This is typecasting, we're casting this result to a string. You could do something similar with awkward quotes, but just casting it to a string will make it work. So what this function does is, um, well, okay, let's copy this base convert part and go to our shortened page. And just in here, I'm going to do a few demonstrations of what this will do. So if I just say echo here and echo the result of this function, so basically putting it to the page, if I type in 1 as this um, number, so say if we had 0 rows, this would be the first key. And if I reload our page now, you see we get 1. If I type in 8, see we get 8. If I type in 9, see where we're going? Get 9. However, 10 results in A. Um, so we go 0 to 9, then A to Z, then we get Z uh, 0, Z1, Z2, etc. until ZZ, and then it's ZZ. I think you get the point. Um, it's quite a nice method. It's very short code. One line creates this sort of short thing. Um, the reason we don't use capitals um, is because, I mean, you could you could create a slightly more complex uh, key generation algorithm um, that uses capital letters as well, which would make your URLs even shorter. The reason we're not doing this is because the way we have the database set up um, is it's case insensitive, so that wouldn't help if um, like you ended up with uh, the query result returning two rows if they happen to have the same letters, but the lowercase equivalents. So yeah, that's why we're doing it like this. It's just a nice short method. It works fairly well. So yeah, uh, that's how that. Well, not how that works. That's the result of that. Um, you can look it up on PHP.net if you feel the need. Uh, okay, so what we're we doing back in the shortened file, we have this base convert of the number of rows. So what we do now is um, insert the row, <laughs> obviously. So you need to do MySQL query. The query we're going to run is an insert. I'm going to be inserting it into the URLs table. Um, columns we're going to be inserting into is the URL key and the URL itself. And the values are going to be two strings. The key is going to be the key we just generated, which is URL key and the URL is the one they entered, which is URL, like so. And then we just want to return the URL key that we generated. So it's basically returning a, s a similar result, except for this it's a new key, and here it was a key we had previously. So both of these returns will return something similar that we can use in the same way. It's effectively the same value, but they're not the same value, because here we're getting one that already exists, and here we're generating one, inserting it, and then returning it. Okay, so that is the shortened URL function complete, and also all of the this file done, basically. Uh, let's just reload the page to check for syntax errors, which there are none of. Uh, so that's that, pretty much done. Next thing we just need to do is code this shorten file. Uh, so we'll do the shorten page first, because it's the com most complicated, and then probably in the next part at this point, we will do the go.php file, and I'll talk about that HD access thing that I keep mentioning. Okay, so uh, we can use the similar method to I used with the login script. Uh, we're going to define this errors array that we're going to use to um, contain any errors, store any errors in the logic section of the code. And then we're going to output these errors here if there are any. Uh, and if not, we're just going to show a message saying your URL has been shortened to this. Obviously, all that's going to happen if the form has been submitted. Um, so, obviously, up here, the first thing we need to do is check for the submission of the form which we're just going to do with a simple if is 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 set check. Um, I'm going to check the for the existence of the post URL variable L. Like, dear, like so. And if that does exist, we want to check some error conditions. Uh, remember the database, and before I mentioned that the maximum length was 1024, uh, I'm just going to check that here to, uh, so we can display a nice message um, rather than this, the URL just not being right 
it will um, be a bit more user friendly to show uh, something like your your URL was too long. Um, you can make this limit higher if you need to, but just for this, we're going with 1024. Okay, so we'll check if string length string str eh, strlen s t r l e n function takes one parameter that is the string, which is post URL, uh, and it returns just an integer number and the number of characters in the string. I'm going to check if that is greater than 1024. And if it is, we want to add something to the errors array. And that something is going to be an error string, which is just going to say there is a limit of 1024 characters. Which I've spelled wrong. Characters. I think that's right. Maybe not. Never mind if it isn't. Um, and we also want to check if the URL is valid, uh, and for this we are going to make use of PHP's filter var function. Um, basically, look on php.net for this, uh, but you can use it to validate a, a URL or an email address, um, which is what we're going to do here. Uh, so we'll do if filter var, this takes two parameters, uh, filter, filter var. Uh, it takes two parameters. The first is the string or variable you want to work with, and the second is a constant which represents the mode for this function. So the string we want to work with is post URL, and the mode is filter validate URL. And that constant will just tell the function that we want to validate this as a URL. And in this mode, the function will return false if the URL is invalid. So we check this against false. If it returns false, we want to add to the errors array again. And what we want to add is um, your U URL does not appear to be valid. NTO should be not, like so. Um, just a quick point, this only checks the URL in terms of syntax. It won't actually validate the URL like if it exists, which is something you don't really need to do for this anyway. Uh, so now we just want to check if the if there if there haven't been any errors yet. So we we'll check as we did before if empty errors uh, equals no. Yeah. If empty errors. If so, if the errors array is still empty at this point, that means these two conditions are both false. So if that is the case, we define this URL key variable. Because remember our shorten URL function returned the URL key. Mm. Uh, so we define that as the shorten url result uh, and we just pass that function the post url variable like so so what we have now is um, well that's the logic part of this code done so down here we just need to display the message telling the user what's happened if there have been any errors or if the url has been sort of shortened so we're just going to check two conditions the first one is if empty errors equals false, that means there have been some errors, so, whoops, I'll highlight it again, so we're just going to output a simple uh, unordered list, so we're going to do echo ul echo close ul, and then in here, we want to use a for each loop, for each errors as error and then we want to display that error in a um, li tag, so we'll do echo li li and then the error variable oops error, like so so that will display the errors if they, if they do occur and then we're also going to check else if, only check this if the first condition is met that is, so we're going to check if is set url key, because that means the url has been shortened successfully then we're just going to do echo a message which is going to be the URL to the site. So let's just say your URL is... I'm just going to copy and paste this into for time efficiency. So what we're going to output is this part which is the URL to the page I'm working with and then the variable URL key. Okay, so we can very quickly test this and hopefully it'll work. No, uh, if I click that you see your URL does not appear to be valid. If I type in a valid URL, google.com, hit shorten, you see we get this, 
If I go to the database and hit browse, re-log in, you see we get Google, I obviously mistyped it, but it has been submitted to the database. Okay, so thank you for watching, and join me in the next part where we'll continue.